For more on the State of the Union, I'm joined here in the studio by Eric Schnur. He's worked as a speechwriter for former Vice President Al Gore and is an adjunct professor at American University. Eric, thanks for being on the program. Oh, it's my pleasure. So I assume you watched a speech. I did. Um, your thoughts, you've worked on certainly a lot of major political speeches. How did this one add up? So I thought it was, um, I thought it was a really good night for the president. You know, he's been emboldened by this uh, probably unexpected uptick in the economy and his poll numbers. And it was really interesting, the talk before the speech was, how is the president going to react to this mm -hmm. new Republican Congress? And, you know, if you really listen closely, he said, all right, I have a speech on their turf, but I'm going to deliver a speech on my terms. And I really think he, he delivered a message that he wanted to deliver, regardless of what the House or the Senate might look like in terms of composition. Did you sense a difference in his demeanor, in his delivery, in the content of the speech, now that the Republicans are in control of Congress? Yeah, I think it was, um, there was certainly a difference compared to last year's State of the Union, where he seemed a little weary. He seemed tired. He seemed almost the, the job, the burden of the job was getting to him. This year it was more of a campaign style speech. He didn't really get lost. He even said at one point, I'm not going to deliver the typical checklist to you tonight. Mm -hmm, I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about what unites us, our values. Now, if you look closely, he actually did do a checklist. There was a laundry list of policy proposals. But and how many of those proposals do you actually believe and think Congress is going to pass? Oh, very few. Uh, and in a way, with the State of the Union, that becomes beside the point. Mm -hmm. He has an opportunity to talk to millions and millions. I think they, I don't think, I don't know, I'm not sure if the final numbers came out. I think they anticipated about 30 million people watching. What Half the number of his original first day of the union, but still a, a significant audience for him. So, Eric, we heard in Jessica Stone's piece, you know, how Obama once again repeated he's going to basically um, veto any new sanctions on Iran. Let's mm -hmm. hear, listen to a clip, and then I want to get your reaction. Okay. Between now and this spring, we have a chance to negotiate a comprehensive agreement that prevents a nuclear-armed Iran, secures America and our allies, including Israel, while avoiding yet another Middle East conflict. And that's why I will veto any new sanctions bill that threatens to undo this progress. You know, obviously the president feels very strongly mm -hmm. about this. He does not want to threaten the nuclear, crucial nuclear negotiations sure. going on with Iran. But the critics, the Republicans would say, this is not a sign of an outreach. This is not a sign of cooperation. You know, it was an in I, I certainly think it was an interesting part of the speech. Before the speech, people actually questioned whether he would even use the word veto. And through most of the speech, while not always saying things that were agreeable to Republicans, it was still conciliatory in tone. Mm -hmm. Here, there was a real line in the sand, a real distinction made. And, and, you know, and I think it, it worked for him. And then after that, he actually had a very nice turn of phrase. Right? He said, you know, we have these negotiations. I cannot guarantee they will succeed. Right. But the sanctions that the Republicans right. are proposing right, right, will right. all but guarantee failure. Yes. Let's hear the Republican response to the president, a chunk of it, to the president's State of the Union address. Of overreach. We'll propose ideas that aim to cut wasteful spending and balance the budget with meaningful reforms, not higher taxes like the president has proposed. What, what did you think of what she had to say? She's a newbie, right? She's she a, is. Just elected, uh, made a lot of news because she was very provocative in mm -hmm. her campaign ads and, and on the stump. You know, there, there's a, a myth in Washington that the State of the Union is the hardest speech to deliver. It's not true. The response to the State of the right. Union is the hardest to deliver. You just can't live up to the pageantry and the tradition of the State of the Union. But how was she received with what she had to say among Democrats or, and Republicans? You know, I think you know, with, this, with the response, because it's such a constricting mm -hmm. platform to speak, I think, you know, she uses words and code words and phrases and policies that her base, the Republican Party, is going to love. And then for those on the Democratic side, on President Obama's side, you know, it's, it's filled with generalities. Yeah. How do you, and that's, that's the challenge of that speech. So, Eric, I want to get to one final point. Um, Google actually released this report mm -hmm. talking about what people were Googling while the president was making mm -hmm. his State of the Union address. And I, I was stunned by some of the things that people were Googling. Um, one of them was, um, what is middle class income? Why are gas prices dropping? How much does the president make? When does Obama's term end? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, of all those things, 
probably the one of substance is what is middle class income and why are gas prices dropping. Sure. What does that say about the American public and where their mind is and how much they care about real issues like fighting terror, the economy? Well, I, I don't know if it necessarily says something just about the American public as it does the public writ large. And you know, attention spans are shrinking. Right? It's really hard to command an audience for an hour. You know, and in some ways, it's, it's, it's good that they are looking at these substantive issues of, OK, the president's talking a lot about you know, what he called middle class economics. What is the middle class? How do we define that? You know, he at least they were Googling something yeah, semi-related to this. Right. He state says one of the thing about universe. fuel, you know, clean energy. Uh, Senator Ernst says another. I'm going to look at gas prices. I want to learn more. So in a way, it's very positive that they're looking and doing their own research. They should. Okay, Eric Schnur, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.